It's the first day of school. Everyone's got a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, and I'm a little nervous. I really want to make the first day a very successful day in my classroom. And I don't want to go around doing the same thing all the other teachers are doing. I don't want to get involved with the administrative hoopla. I don't want to be handing out textbooks. I want my students to be excited about science, chemistry from the very first day. So this is an activity I use, sort of a bell ringer to get my students' interest up, making them want to be on time for the second day of class. It all starts with two test tubes. Now, in one test tube, I have a clear and colorless solution. I'm going to take this test tube, and I'm going to remove half of it, putting it into a second test tube. The exact amounts are not important. And then I'm going to arrange the test tube so that in this activity, I'm always going to work from the upper test tube. If you're afraid that you're going to mix the two solutions, you might even put a stopper in the lower test tube to make sure that nothing happens to this initial solution. Now, what we're going to do is a couple of passes. I'll have pairs of students in my classroom working together. And so the first pass, I'm going to think of something for my students to share. You know, they're very talkative. They want to move around. They don't want to be sitting in their desks. And I want them excited about what they're doing. So I can go to my first student, and I can say, hi, hi. I'm your teacher, Ms. Gonzo. You are? Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, it's nice to meet you. Same here. Hey, Jeff. I've heard I... a lot about your class. Oh, I, I <laughs> hope so. <laughs> Jeff, you know, we have a required reading list at school, and so um, I, I love to read. One of my favorite books that I read this summer, one of my favorites is probably The Fountainhead. How about you? Yes, I read 2001, A Space Odyssey. Excellent. You know, we can talk for a minute or two. Just let the students get it out. If they're going to talk, let them talk about something that I want them to talk about. And then I'll stop them. And I'll say, okay, I want you to do an exchange. And so we're going to take some of the solution from the upper tube. I'll put mine into Jeff's test tube. And Jeff goes into mine. That's the first pass. All of my students would be doing this. And then I'll ask the students to move around, find a second student, someone that they don't know so well. You know, on the first day of school, I want my students to be comfortable. And, and if there's a new student in the classroom, it's good to get them involved, have them meet, know at least a name of one, uh, one or two other students in the classroom. So in moving around, they go to another student and a quick introduction. I'm Penny Sconzo. I'm Mike. Nice to meet you, Mike. Nice to meet you. You know, Mike, I really love sports, and at schools, especially high schools, there's always a real emphasis on the sports programs. What's your favorite sports team, Mike? Well, I'm on the baseball team. I love the Chicago Cubs. The Cubs? Ah, oh, I'm from Atlanta. Go Braves! And after we introduce ourselves in this fashion and do a little conversation, maybe a little arguing over who's the better team, there's no argument, there's no argument. <laughs> then we're going to do the same sort of exchange. Roughly half of the liquid from the upper tubes. All right. Now, we're getting ready for our third and last exchange. You know, I would actually have all of my students do the first two passes, but now what you're going to be seeing is what's really going on in the classroom. I might ask them to talk about their favorite books or movies, favorite sports team. I might ask them just to share something about what they did over the summer, but I want to bring in as much chemistry as possible. So I would turn to my students, very intelligent looking group I have here, and I'm going to ask them in this restricted area, maybe it would just be my classroom at school, I want you to act like a gas. You know there's three main phases of matter. We have solids, liquids, and gases. So I want you, think about it, what do you know as my students about gases coming into my classroom? I'm, I'm going to learn a little bit about you now. How creative you are, what sort of a background you've got. So I want everyone now to act like a gas. Let's go to it. Oh, be careful. Uh-huh. 
and then I will stop my students. Stop. Now, at this point I ask them to find someone that they have not interacted with previously so that they are going to be meeting three new people, interacting with three different people during the course of this quick demonstration. We'll come up and I'll say hi. Hi. I'm Penny. I'm Emily. Hi, Emily. And what'd you do this summer? We'll talk about it for a few seconds. You know, I can use the time as any way that I want. Two or three minutes is usually what I'll work with. And then we're going to stop and we're going to do our exchange. Okay. When you're finished, we're going to get ready and line it up. Now, there has to be a chemical application here. We have interacted with one another, and there's a really great analogy that you could use for this uh, demonstration. You could relate it to passing uh, diseases or colds around in your classroom. But for me as a chemistry teacher, I'm going to talk about chemical contaminations. You know, on the first day of school, one thing I want to talk about is how much I love working in the labs. And I want my students to know that there's going to be a lot of activity in my classroom. But working in the labs means knowing the laboratory rules and acting responsibly. We've got to have good chemical procedures, good laboratory procedures, and great chemical hygiene while we're working in the lab. We don't want any chemical contamination. So, imagine a situation where there's been a chemical spill. Now what I'm going to do to illustrate this while I'm talking is I'm going to take a colorless liquid and you're going to take and you're going to put one or two drops into both test tubes. One or two drops into both test tubes. All right, And then just give it a little jiggle. And while they're doing that, let's imagine that we've had a chemical spill in the laboratory. I've asked the student to clean it up. They've done a good wipe down on the countertop, but they didn't do a great job. Some of it, uh, the residue still remains. Their lab partner sits their notebook down on the tabletop. That notebook later gets picked up, put into a book bag. It's touching all the other books in the book bag. That student with the notebook goes off to their Spanish class now, takes the notebook out, puts it on the desk in their Spanish class. My second period class comes in, what's going to happen? Well, they're going to go to the laboratory, and some students are going to put their hands down on that countertop. And sometime during that period, their hands are going to go to their face, to their mouth, to their nose, to their eyes, if, they're not got, if they don't have their goggles on at that point. What is good laboratory procedure? Well, as we get this passed around, we're going to see how far along are we. We're done. Where's the white bottle? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Let's see what I've got here. I'm going to drop some of the colorless solution into my original sample. Nothing happening there. And then into my mixture. Nothing happening there. Now that's my results, but let's take a look at some of the results that we see here. Okay, we look similar. We interacted with one another, shared some information, introduced ourselves. But look at some of the other test tubes. All right, here we've got one. Can you hold it out just a little bit? That's great. Where we have the initial test tube is clear, colorless, and the mixture that we've been working with has a deep red color to it. Look at Jeff's test tubes. Jeff has two <laughs> test tubes, both red. So we see some people with colorless test tubes, two colorless test tubes, some with one colorless, one pink, some with two pink test tubes. And everybody take a look. Well, now my students are interested. What's going on here? What's happening? They make observations. And that's a very important part of any laboratory experiment, to make careful observations. But once you've made the observations, trying to interpret those observations, and now they're wondering, well, what's going on here? What's happening? How can we explain this? And I'll let my students just kind of ponder over it, make some of their predictions, look for patterns. How did this happen? 
Can you figure it out? Maybe they've got some experience with the chemistry involved here, and they'll be sharing it with their friends. But if that doesn't happen, maybe you can do something like this. Let's have anyone with two pink or red, pink to red test tubes step forward, move up to here. That would be Jeff. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. Hi, Ms. Gonzo. Mm -hmm. Now, a second line here. Anyone who has a pink test tube in the lifted test tube, come on up and let's make a line here. Anyone? Okay, so we have our second line. Excellent. And then we'll have our third line, all the test tubes clear, colorless. Okay, at this point, maybe this will help the students to make predictions as to what happened. And the obvious thing would be, Jeff, you had a spill in the lab today, didn't you? I did. <laughs> yes, he did. And did you clean it up properly? No, no. Jeff, you didn't. No. And we need to discuss our laboratory procedures and clean up how okay. we're going to handle a spill. All right. And so Jeff started the problem. He had a laboratory spill. Now, then, how many of you talked to Jeff? Raise your hand if you talked to Jeff. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Raise your hands real high. You talked to Jeff. So it's obvious how you got chemically contaminated, right? There was a direct contact between you and Jeff some way. You might have been working in that laboratory area. So direct contact there, but three of you, raise your hands, did not talk to Jeff. So do you know how you picked up the chemical contamination? From you. <laughs> okay, look at this example. She's pointing, point, I mean really point. You never talked to Jeff, did you? I did. You talked to Jeff. I didn't. But you didn't. You talked to, name? My name is Dave. You talked to Dave. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> thanks, Dave. <laughs> she thanks Dave. So even though she wasn't working at Jeff's lab bench, Dave picked up the contamination some way on his notebooks, on his hands, and then later contact with another student has spread the chemical contamination. You know, I think that uh, talking about laboratory safety is not one of the most exciting topics to our students, but you can make it exciting. You can take advantage of the first of the school year, the energy, the enthusiasm, let the students move around, let the students talk to one another, Pick the questions that you want to use in your classroom that will help you get a better start to the school year. Take this. Use it in your classroom. Make it work for you. And the amazing thing is you'll be surprised at when you get down to the acid-base chemistry at the end of the year, how many students are going to say, wait, didn't we do that on the first day of school? This is very simple. In one test tube, in one test tube that Jeff had, Jeff, come over here and stand right here. <laughs> Jeff had, all the test tubes contained nothing but water. Everyone started off with a test tube filled with water, and Jeff was the only test tube, had the only test tube that had a couple of drops of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide in it. That's going to give us a clear, colorless solution. Now, we didn't see anything at first, and we did our three exchanges, and Jeff's solution of sodium hydroxide was then mixed with some of the other solutions. Still, nothing is visible. At the end, we added some phenolphthalein. Now, phenolphthalein is an acid-base indicator. It is colorless in an acid. It is, as you can see, sort of a fuchsia a very nice hot pink in a base. And so we realize from the patterns that we see who started the problem of our chemical contamination. <laughs> Guilty as charged, the evidence supports that. Sorry. It's a great way of bringing <laughs> some acid-based chemistry into your classroom. The students may not understand the acid-based chemistry at this point, but it makes the point of the importance 
of keeping your lab clean and making sure that you follow the laboratory procedures and the laboratory safety that the teacher explains at the beginning of the school year. Thank you.